Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. Hello and welcome to My Hometown. I'm Bill Horan. Did you know that National Garden Clubs have existed in the United States since 1891? In these clubs, members learn about horticulture and how to sustain a healthy garden so they can teach others about it. Today we'll learn more because there's a club right here on Long Island that is part of a greater national movement. We learned about them thanks to the Long Island Herald newspapers. Our guests today are Ginny Meltzer and Cheryl Bennett, co-presidents of the Merrick Garden Club. Ginny and Cheryl, welcome to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. We should have fun today. We want to learn a lot about this. But first, let's start off. First of all, you're co-presidents. Yes. So we have the voice of authority from either one of you, right? Yes. Okay. Now, d- tell me what a garden club really is and why is it important we know about gardening? Can't we just go in the backyard and throw some seeds in the ground? You can. Okay. But if you want your seeds to do a better, to be more <laughs> successful, it helps to have guidance from every, from, from another source, just like any topic. I I was going to say, of course, if I throw seeds in the ground, they're not going to grow. The birds are going to come and eat them. I'm going to get nothing. And months later, I'll say, look, I grew some weeds. That's all I did. But um, what do you actually show people? In other words, is it the nurturing of it, like you, a doctor would tell us, eat this food, uh, do this exercise? Our garden club is focused currently more on on, um, showing the flowers, arranging the flowers, and growing a ornamental garden. That's what we started out in, in 1933. We are evolving to try to help people to do exactly what you want to know. We have, a members, we have members, such as myself, who are also master gardeners, and my, our members come to me sometimes with their specific questions about that. If I was in the club, I would be coming to you with everything because I'm the one who grows the weeds. So uh, I, I think we need your good advice. Now, what made each of you want to be part of a garden club? Well, I've been a lifelong gardener. My mother gardened. I grew up on Long Island. And um, when we bought our house on Long Island, my, my, my main um, thing was to have a lot of flowers in my garden. Um, so when I retired, I was able to spend a little bit more time uh, in my garden, and I joined the garden club. Was this more for a social, uh, you know, meet other people who like something than you do? Or was it to make yourself a better gardener, like we might take a cooking course? It was to make myself a better, a better gardener. But I have to say, I've met a lot of wonderful people in the Garden Club. Uh, we have members who've been uh, part of the Garden Club for over 20 years, and they've become lifelong friends. I always find that's a great sign. When you see too much turnover, if people have been there a number of years... You're doing something right. They must like it. They're learning from it and en- enjoying what they're doing. Cheryl, you mentioned before the term master gardener. Did you just give that to yourself? You decided, I'm a master gardener? Yes. And like you're a co-president? No, I, I'm just kidding about that. But the term master gardener, does that have a significance that we should know about? Do you do something to achieve that title? A master gardener is something that uh, I'm trained by uh, New York State and in New York, an agricultural college in New York State. In New York State, it happens to be Cornell University, and they train people to um, to become better gardeners and in all kinds of areas. You know, from from pesticides to herbicides to gar- uh, vegetables to ornamentals to trees pruning, and you you. It's a very good course, actually, and then you, you get a little certificate, and after you've done about 150 hours of volunteer service, you can call yourself a master gardener. And the idea is they need more to educate more people, and then those people will disseminate the correct information amongst the population. And I'm just thinking when you said that you're dealing with insecticides, things that are poison. Yes. And it is important to know how to use it's them It's important properly. to know how to use them. And in, and now uh, I can stress, don't use them. Okay. Stop. Now, when you, um, uh, I think you said you have to put in 150 hours of, what did you call it, community service? Community service. How do you do that? Does that mean joining a club like this? Or do you go out and just uh, help people with their gardens or do it for the local township? Community service is mostly educational to educate people at, at, in the case of Nassau County, they have a farm in East Meadow where we would educate people who would come, who would come and ask questions. And, and we would tend their garden. 
a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you mean I can get you if I ask a few questions, I can get you to come and take care of my garden. No. I don't have to do no. I, okay. I, I will. You were very I, quick with that. If I had the time, I would, but I can hardly take care of mine. No, I'm sure, and I mean, I'm, I'm yeah, of course yes. about it. Yes. But I'm just but thinking. But I can give I you can advice. I can give you resources. I can tell you about other people. I can tell you about the Master Garden Club and uh, the Master Garden, the Merrick Garden Club. And people that you can go to for camaraderie and uh, advice. I'm just wondering, do people call you up like they would a doctor and say, you know, I'm having trouble, my petunias aren't growing or or whatever. And then you give them like the uh, usual troubleshooting? When part part of the community service is being on on the telephone at uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension and it was certain mornings and people would call Cornell and with their questions. And we would say, they'd say, you know, I have a beetle in my yard. It's eating everything. What do I do? <laughs> and so that's how, that's, I would help them. Okay, perfect. Now, I see that the club goes back to 1933. Long Island was really quite different then. And Ginny, we're going to ask you, like, can you tell us how it got started? Do you know anything? <laughs> Is there a kind of a club historian who fills people in on this? We actually do have club scrapbooks going back that far. But in the 1930s, Long Island was first being settled. Um, Most uh, women stayed home, and people did all their own landscaping. So the Garden Club was set up at that time because people needed knowledge um, as to how to plant, what to plant. I'm sure in those years, um, a lot of people were growing their own vegetables, you know, in victory gardens. So these garden clubs were set up to share knowledge, as Cheryl had mentioned. Um, And now, over the years, very few people do their own gardening, but everybody still needs to be educated as to what are the best practices in their in their garden and in their lawn and in their environment. That's interesting because for most of us, we forget about that. Things change fairly slowly. We don't notice them like the clock moving, but the hands get to a different time. And in 1933, as you said, the wives probably were home, and or the husbands maybe the same way. They had more time. They weren't filled with the Internet and television. Everybody didn't have three and four cars per household. So they did things around the house, and the garden was a fun achievement to do and to either maybe get some uh, vegetables or crops mm-hmm. going. Absolutely. Or just if you enjoy flowers or just the great feel of accomplishment in planting something and seeing it grow, and you've been a part of that. So it's very interesting that how the times have changed. Now, Cheryl, can you tell us, does the club have an official mission? It does have a mission, and that mission is evolving. <laughs> uh, it used to be much much more geared for our simpler times, where we uh, one of the things we would do, do at the meetings would have arrangements and uh, possibly give each other advice, but also we would do our community service projects because they always did a segment of community service projects would be a little simpler to do right now we still do something like meals on wheels where we will prepare arrangements to give to the catholic charities to give to people who receive you know so when they get their meal they have a little arrangement with it oh that's nice but um now it's become evident especially to Ginny and I that even though we're we're older than a lot of people we need to st- we need to get involved with the climate crisis that's going on right now we need to help educate people about it and we just don't we don't want to sit around and pass the buck to our to the next generation because unfortunately that's been the that's been the pattern for for so many years we've got to start we uh we've got to start supporting our pollinators <laughs> okay uh planting the right plants to do that We've got to start um, realizing that we have a, we're having droughts now because of our water crisis. So uh, that means we can't water or irrigate our lawn all the time. We've got to stop. We've got to plant drought tolerant plants. So it's mostly it, we're Ginny and I are bringing it into a more educational and forward thinking club. You know, I'm just thinking we hear the expression grassroots. But you ladies really, literally are. No, I'm serious. What? Because you're, you're talking about watering the grass. Right. And you really are the grassroots. Because if you can save us, and I'm talking about the average people day to day, and we learn from you, our neighbors, how to do, how to take care of the lawn without wasting that water. Because I'm reading about it just as everybody else is, and it's coming. And in some states, it's getting very, very expensive. 
to pay your water bill because we're running in, I think, uh, on the West Coast, they're literally running out of water. They don't have it. Definitely. And uh, certainly you don't want to be wasting it. So we can start now. And as I said, literally you're the grassroots of it because you're telling us what to do and you're the experts. (laughs) Before we go any further, though, at this point in the show, I just want to remind our listeners that you're listening to My Hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Bill Horan. My guests today are Ginny Meltzer and Cheryl Bennett. They are the co-presidents of the Merrick Garden Club, which teaches its members about plants, gardening, and all things in between. (laughs) Ladies, let me just ask you, um, in the work world, does your uh, everyday work, either now or in the past, did it involve gardening work, or were you like something totally the opposite? And Ginny, I'll start with you. I was the assistant controller of a medium-sized public company. So I was in the finance world when I was working. So you were playing with computers and numbers and lots of money. Yes. Actually, I was. (laughs) So in that world, green meant something different. It wasn't dealing with the It did. And, you know, um, what what I learned in my work experience is many people who have jobs like that really enjoy having a creative outlet as their hobbies, and and gardening is that. I I was just going to say that. I think we all need something. Some people like to run. Some people play, you know, different sports. Uh, They might engage in, I don't know, mahjong, poker, card games, something that they find that's fun, video games. And um, it's an outlet, and it's seeing something grow while you're working with the money and producing it for us. And how about um, Cheryl? The same. I was a a banker. Uh, I dealt with money. I love numbers. I dealt with money. I I got involved with um, ment- mentoring inner, inner city kids, and so then I went into teaching. It just evolved all over the place. My my love of gardening came from my mother when I was a little kid, and that was of course back in the in the fifties uh, and sixties when times were a lot simpler, and we u- we used to do our own gardening, and that's you know it, so it was a love that was always there, and it, it didn't get to come out until I was able to retire, because. All you, you know, when you commute to work, it's dark when you by, get home. Yeah, I was going to say, by the time you get home, <laughs> plus you're probably exhausted and yes. you have other duties yes. that have to be done. Now you have a little more time to yep. do it and get involved in things. Um, I'm going to ask both of you, what knowledge would you like to pass on to our listeners and actions that they should know about in the gardening world that you could give a tip just as you did before uh, to anybody who has any kind of uh, gardening space, lawn, or interest in this? Contact different resources and get advice. Join the club. <laughs> D- uh, well, our club, but there are a lot of clubs out there. Are that, there? Okay. That, oh, yes. There are. Where, um, there's, uh, I'm also a founder of a Nassau chapter of North American Butterfly Association. But there are a lot of clubs and, and universities, things like uh, New York Botanical Garden, which I'm sure... It, people around the New York area are very familiar with. They have all kinds of classes and they're so, they're so interesting to just uh, just dip your toe in these things. And then when you, you find out like-minded people and you've always got somebody to ask, but if you've got a question before and you're not sure what to do, contact your local cooperative extension and you do a, do a web search on it and find out what it is. There's a different one in each county in the country, actually. And get advice before you do things, especially before you do pesticides. Get help on how to prune trees. I honestly never would have thought of that. And that's why we have you here today to tell us that because that makes so much sense. Why not ask somebody before you go and do it? You have the branch fall on your head. Maybe you ruin the tree or destroy it or kill it. Or or you're using a pesticide that can hurt you yourself or if there's children around or pets, something like that. So it makes all the sense in the world. And Ginny, what advice or what would you like to pass on to us? Well, uh, just following up on your mention of pesticides, we really need to stop using them. Um, Our pollinators are in severe decline. Monarch butterflies are now an endangered species. Um, We need all these insects and birds to be healthy so that they can pollinate our crops and keep our environment clean, safe, and healthy for us. Um, And using herbicides, um, you know, everybody wants to have a beautiful lawn, but when you use herbicides, the birds and the insects that feed in your lawn end up getting poisoned. You know, our local birds can live up to 15 years. And if people are putting herbicides and pesticides on their lawns five, six times a year, which I think is kind of normal um, in our community, 
we're really poisoning our our environment. Yeah, that's a great message to get out to people, um, and, and that I wanted to go into that next because uh, I think people go, oh, "Poo poo! What do I care if there's more insects? They just bite me anyway, or those birds are always pooping on my car or something." But really, they're very important to our ecosystem here and anywhere. And once we start eliminating them, it's going to be a great effort to bring them back or we're going to have to have something artificial to make up for what they would do for us. And then it's going to be an expense and taxpayers are going to complain. Why are we doing this? Why didn't we do this 20 years ago? Well, this is the 20 years ago you're going to be talking about, right? Yes, and you know, here on Long Island, we have a very high incidence of certain cancers, particularly yes, breast cancer, um, which can be traced to the pollutants in our environment. Um, some of those we inherited, um, and some of them we're dumping on ourselves. Um, so we really need to rethink how we live. And that extends not just to our gardens and our lawns, but to our lifestyles in general. We really need to live a more sustainable lifestyle. We need to stop buying bottled water and uh, using uh, recycled bottles for our own water drinking. Um, We need to think about maybe eating a little bit less meat and using a little bit fewer in the way of dairy products. These all have tremendous impacts on our environment in the long term. Now, as gardeners, and you make yourself in a certain class like baseball fans or wrestling fans or whatever. As gardeners, how would you tell people to support the environment that, uh, you know, a simple neighbor down the block could do if you were uh, running a little block campaign? Well, Ginny mentioned the most the most important things, which is really, st- you know, when you use pesticides or herbicides, another thing to think about is we're, we're here on Long Island, okay? That's leaching into the groundwater, and then we're drinking it. It takes a long time. But if after a period of enough time, you know, we are we are polluting ourselves. Sometimes there's we have pockets where there are areas in Long Island where there's like a a pocket of of a lot of cancers, and we need to ask ourselves why is that and what what can we do about it. So the kind of thing we need to do is to get smaller lawns. Actually, lawns don't sustain our environment or the or the wildlife that we that's so important for. For the food chain, just think about the food chain. It goes from insects to birds to uh, birds of prey to other things. Okay, we got to start thinking about more than just ourselves. So, getting our lawns smaller. Okay, not using the pesticides. Don't use as much water. Try not to waste things. Um, the other thing that one of the consequences of um, COVID was that. I had all more time, just like everyone else. And what I did was I participated in a number of Zooms um, from different Eastern, Eastern Landscape Alliance and other different commun- uh, other different resources where I learned so much and I about what I should or should not be doing. Things like I didn't realize that eating a lot of meat. One of the reasons why it's why it's bad is all of these. Big herds of cows, they they exude all this methane gas, something I never would have thought about. You know, it's so interesting talking to you ladies because here growing up, we were always taught a nice lawn. It shows you take care of the lawn. You maintain a nice house. You contribute to the neighborhood. And it, it kind of made you a good citizen back in right. 1950 and 60 and 70. That's and not we true. thought we were doing the right thing. Right thing, but we're not. And now, and you, what you're telling us makes so much sense. First of all, we're giving ourselves more work. Or we pay someone, perhaps a hundred dollars a month or a couple hundred dollars a month, to come and maintain those bushes and lawns. We could put, I'm sure, either gravel as they do in in um, Arizona, or sand, or rocks out in front, and it looks very nice. But we don't need that. And if the water is leaching into it, and we're literally poisoning poisoning ourselves, oh my gosh! I mean, I'm learning things about uh, the environment I never expected today. I'm sorry, before we go on, I just want to let our audience know that if you're just tuning in, you're listening to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm Bill Horan. Our guests today are Ginny Meltzer and Cheryl Bennett, co-presidents of the Merrick Garden Club. I'm sorry I interrupted you. A thought just occurred to me. I mean, I have so many things that I they pop in and out to tell you about, but the other thing is we, and I'm guilty of this, is to start collecting our rainwater 
or else make sure that it leaches into our lawns. Most people let it go in their gutters, down their driveway, yep. and it goes into the the streets, which in the case of Long Island, goes down down the um, the sewer grates, and it ends up in the Meadowbrook estuary or other... Est- we have a whole system of estuaries all along Long Island that picks up gasoline, oil, pollutants, litter... That wouldn't have happened if we had all responsibly let that water go in, leach in through our own lawns. And when something, when water leaches in the, in the soil the way it used to when we didn't have all these roadways, it cleans itself. Because that soil catches a lot of the pollute, a lot of the uh, pollutants. Yeah, this is real. I feel like I'm sitting in a science class. Yeah, I'm and sorry. About no, that. it's very good. No, I mean this complimentary because, and you're saving my life with it. So you're telling us things that we didn't know about. So what I'm going to ask both of you now: if uh, someone is hearing this and you're doing so much, first of all. Uh, if they want to get involved with the club, uh, what does it take? Do they have to live in a certain area, or is there, you know, something we should know about to join? <clears throat> the Merrick Garden Club has members that live in Merrick, of course, <clears throat> Belmore, Wantaw, Hewlett. Um, we have members in all surrounding communities, um, and we're 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 thrilled to welcome new members. We frequently have guests at our meetings. Um, we have an email address, MerrickGardenClub at gmail.com, uh, where we can be contacted, um, and we will be happy to share whatever information we have. That's an easy one to remember. Sometimes we have guests with the, the email address has nothing to do or seemingly nothing to do with the club, but it's MerrickGardenClub at, at gmail. gmail.com. Easy enough to remember. And uh, is there anything someone should know about it? Do they have to be a certain age? Do they have to have a certain background? Not at all. Okay, that's it. That's a direct answer. That's why you're a co-president. Now, let me ask you, Cheryl, um, are there any other projects you want to tell us about that the club is presently involved in? I know you mentioned some things before the show, and I would never connect it with a, um, a garden club. So tell us some of the things you're doing or you're involved, or you, do you want Ginny to take that? Let, let Ginny. Uh, Ginny's okay. better at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're currently working on a beautification project in Merrick, in uh, town, right in downtown Merrick with a local Girl Scout troop, um, and we're planting some spring flowering bulbs uh, in a little park on Merrick Avenue. Um, We were also contacted as a result of the Herald article by uh, John F. Kennedy High School in Belmore, and we're going to be working with them in establishing a pollinator garden, which is a garden that has plants that um, encourage our pollinators to nest and lay eggs. That's great. I would think for any high school, that's something. Now, now we, maybe we can abuse you and your club members and, and tell any high schools out there, they're doing this. Where was this? Are you doing it? Which uh, John F. Kennedy High School in Belmore. And we would be more than happy. This is our first such project. Uh, we would be more than happy in using to use this as an educational source for future projects. I think that's great. And, and now we can uh, say, don't let John F. Kennedy High School get ahead of you. Grab hold of the Merrick Garden Club. You'll get ladies like our co-presidents today or maybe some of the other members to come out and actually help show people how they can do it in everyday life, not just in the classroom, learning about pollutants and uh, what's good for the environment, but you're actually changing it in your hometown. And I'm guessing this could be a project for an Eagle Scout or um, I guess the Girl Scouts do the same thing or any service club that's involved, church groups, whatever. So uh, that's something I I really never thought of. Um, If someone wants to be a new member, is there something qualifying? Do they have to grow a garden and show you how it produces or uh, do they come in? Is there dues paying or what do they have to do? We do after after two meetings, we do ask them to, you know, join the club and and there we do have collect dues but there's no requirements at all i mean we and in, in fact if someone is young enough we'll we'll just take them in a, in a junior we'd be happy to form a junior garden club now uh, i see that you take donations like what kind of we've had groups on and it may, becomes obvious if they're working with young children what they're uh, looking to have donated or a food pantry but in a garden glo- uh, club i wouldn't think of that so what kind of donation would you be looking for Well, we do uh, an annual fundraiser every spring. Uh, We sell our own homegrown plants, and that's our major source of income other than our dues. And we're we're using that to fund some of these community-based projects. Um, The other things that we're interested in 
is seed collection. You know, Cheryl has a large uh, collection of milkweed plants and other plants that are beneficial for butterflies. So in the fall, we collect those seeds, and we're going to utilize those with our pollinator garden project. If other people have similar kinds of plants and they want to donate seeds to us, we'll make sure they're put to good use. I I think you'd be great, seriously, speaking at local high schools and and, uh, junior highs to tell people about it. One, to show that what people in the community can do. Because just today, you've really educated me so much. I never thought of all these things with the environments and the butterflies and the wastewater. And you've, uh, if I didn't know it and if you didn't tell us you were in finance and uh, the corporate world, I would think both of you were teachers because you've explained it so well and you know, given us information. Oh, well, thank you. No, thank you. Um, what does the future hold for the Merrick Garden Club? What new activities are you getting into? What new trouble are you going to make? <laughs> <laughs> well, as Cheryl indicated, um, we're, we're going to turn our attentions more towards environmental issues. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> homeowners can do, we were talking about um, lawns and reducing the size of our lawns, You know, one thing that beautifies our homes and adds to our property values, which everybody's interested here uh, on Long Island to do, is turn some of your lawn into a garden and plant native plants that support our local pollinators. Um, There are all sorts of resources for what kind of plants to um, uh, to put in such an area. You want to make sure that those plants would be drought tolerant so we don't have to waste a lot of potable water watering them. Um, And uh, there is a a resource called the Long Island Native Plant Initiative, uh, linpi.org, that can help people with selecting those kinds of plants. You know, you've brought up so many good points about saving the water, saving the environment, and I think people who have... uh, some free time where they could come to... And by the way, how, how often are the meetings? Is it a once a month? Once, Once a, month. a month. Okay, so that's not asking much from people. And uh, just what you've told us today, it's certainly been educational to me. I think it would help not only our environment, but be a fun club to be, join. And it doesn't sound like if it's m- much of a commitment other than to go out and enjoy the gardening. So we want to thank you so much for being with us today. I'd like to let our audience know our guests today have been Ginny Meltzer and Cheryl Bennett. They are the co-presidents of the Merrick Garden Club. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Bill. It was thank a pleasure. Well, it, was, it was fun. I'm Bill Horan. I want to thank you for listening to this week's special edition of My Hometown. We'd like to get your feedback on My Hometown. Send your comments to whpc at ncc.edu. Nassau Community College, where success starts and continues. Till next time, this is Bill St. James. And remember, there's no town like your hometown. <laughs>